Hello and welcome to the Math District. In this video, we will talk about the domain of polynomial, rational, and radical functions, and we will use the examples listed below. So, what is the domain of a function? The domain of a function is the set of all the real numbers that the variable is permitted to have, or in other words, is the set of all the real numbers for which the function is defined. Let's start with the polynomial function f of x equals x cubed plus 5x minus 7. The expression x cubed plus 5x minus 7 represents a polynomial, and in any polynomial, if we would like to replace x with any number, we would not have any restriction, and we would always get an answer. Therefore, the domain of a polynomial function is the set of all the real numbers. To write the answer, we will use the interval notation, and inside the parentheses, we will write that the domain is any number from negative infinity to positive infinity. So, the domain of any polynomial function is always any number from negative infinity to positive infinity. Now let's talk about the domain of the rational function f of x equals x squared plus 5 over x squared plus 5x plus 6. First of all, a rational function is a function where the numerator is a polynomial, and in this case it is x squared plus 5, and the denominator is also a polynomial, and that is x squared plus 5x plus 6. The domain of a rational function is the set of all real numbers except the x values that make the denominator 0. We may remember from pre-algebra that in a fraction we cannot have 0 in the denominator because division by 0 is undefined. So we have to find the numbers that make the denominator 0 and exclude them from the domain. For this, we will take the denominator x squared plus 5x plus 6 and make it equal to 0 and find for what values of x this expression is 0. Because the left side of this equation represents a trinomial, we will start by factoring this trinomial using the sum and the product. So we will start with two sets of parentheses, and in each parenthesis we will write x in the first place. All this product will be equal to 0. Now we have to find what two numbers when added will give us the sum of 5 and when multiplied will give us the product of 6. These two numbers are 2 and 3 because 2 plus 3 makes 5 but 2 times 3 will make 6. So the numbers 2 and 3 will go in each parenthesis. Let's say in the first parenthesis I write plus 2 and in the second one plus 3. Now once we have a product and the product is 0, we will set each factor equal to 0. So x plus 2 equals 0 or x plus 3 equals 0. Let's solve each of these equations. In the first one, minus 2 on both sides, x equals negative 2. In the second one, minus 3 on both sides, x equals negative 3. So the numbers negative 2 and negative 3 make the denominator 0, and we must exclude them from the domain. Now to understand how to write the interval notation, we might look at the number line. So let's say here we have the number line, and on the number line, as we go to the right, we will move toward positive infinity, but as we go to the left, we will move toward negative infinity. Let's say here we have number negative 3, then negative 2 will be to the right of negative 3, because negative 2 is greater than negative 3. These two numbers, they split the entire number line into three intervals. The first interval represents all the numbers from negative infinity up to negative 3. The second interval represents all the numbers between negative 3 and negative 2. 
And the third interval represents all the numbers greater than negative 2. Now let's write the interval notation. The first interval will include the numbers from negative infinity up to negative 3, and we will close with a parenthesis to show that negative 3 is not included. The second interval will be all the numbers between negative 3 and negative 2, and again we use parenthesis to show that neither negative 3 or negative 2 are included, and the third interval represents all the numbers that are greater than negative 2. Therefore, again we use parenthesis to show that negative 2 is not included. Now, to show that all these three intervals are part of the same answer, we will use the union symbol to connect them. So now we can say that the domain of this rational function represents all the real numbers except negative 3 and negative 2, because these two numbers make the denominator 0. And at last, let's talk about the domain of the radical function f of x equals square root of 6 minus 3x. The domain of a radical function is the set of all real numbers except the x values that result in a square root of a negative number. So inside of a square root, we can have a positive number or we can have 0, but we cannot have a negative number. For example, square root of 16 equals 4, square root of 0 equals 0, but square root of negative 16 is not a real number, because there is nothing we can raise to the power of 2 that would give us negative 16. So to find the domain of this radical function, we will take the expression 6 minus 3x, and we will say that this expression must be greater or equal to 0. And now we will solve it for x. We will start by subtracting 6 on both sides. On the left side, 6 and negative 6 will cancel, and we will bring down negative 3x. And on the right side, 0 minus 6 is negative 6. The next step will be divide both sides by negative 3. In an inequality, when we multiply or divide by a negative, we have to flip the inequality symbol. So on the left side, negative 3 and negative 3 will cancel. We will bring x down. And now we have to flip the inequality symbol. So it's not greater or equal anymore, but it's less than or equal. On the right side, negative 6 divided by negative 3 is positive 2. So we just found that the expression inside the radical will be greater or equal to 0 when x is less than or equal to 2. We can take another look at the number line. So here's the number line. To the right we move toward positive infinity. To the left, we move toward the negative infinity. And let's see here we have number 2. All the numbers that are less than or equal to 2, they are to the left of 2 from negative infinity to 2, including 2. So to write the interval notation, we will start with the parenthesis and negative infinity, comma, and then we will write 2. And we will close with a bracket, because when we use a bracket, we show that number 2 is included. So we can say that the domain of this radical function represents all the numbers from negative infinity to positive 2. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I would like to invite you to see more lessons and videos at themathdistrict.com. Thank you!